Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts. I am an FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focus Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic the treatable causes of spinal cord disorders. The treatable cause of spinal cord disorders. Generally, when there is a spinal cord lesion and person presents with paraplegia, there is lot of disappointment. Many people think that there is not much treatment and not much can be done. But then there are lot of causes of spinal cord disorders which are treatable. So as a clinician, more so from the patient's point of view, we should always try to focus on treatable cause of spinal cord disorders. If there are treatable spinal cause of spinal cord disorders, then it is going to do a lot of good to the patient. He is going to get cured of the disorder and then he is going to feel happy and as doctors we are going to feel satisfied. There are a lot of spinal cord disorders where we can't do much about it. It is more for the academic exercise and nostalgia but then there are many spinal cord disorders which are treatable. So today we are going to talk about these treatable spinal cord disorders. The treatable spinal cord disorders can be grouped under the broad headings compressive spinal cord disorders, vascular spinal cord disorders, inflammatory spinal cord disorders, infectious spinal cord disorders, developmental spinal cord disorders and finally the metabolic spinal cord disorders. So now let's see one by one. The compressive spinal cord disorders, if there is epidural that is outside the dura or intradural or intramedullary neoplasms, if there are tumors, it can be removed. So it's a treatable cause. If there is epidural abscess going and compressing the spinal cord, wherein the patient presents with fever and systemic features of infections, we can diagnose by MRI, we can drain the abscess out and we can give antibiotics. So again, it's a treatable cause. Persons will become better, absolutely better. Epidural hemorrhage, herniated disc. The herniated disc, we can give medical form of treatment. And if it is not going to subside, then we go to the surgical treatment. The herniated disc or the disc prolapse occurs because of the degenerative changes because of excessive mobility. We see disc prolapse at two particular regions, one the cervical region, second the lumbar region. We don't see thoracic disc prolapse that commonly. Why we don't see thoracic disc prolapse that commonly? Because we hardly move thorax. So when there is no movement, there is not going to be any degenerative change or disc prolapse. Second, the thorax is supported by ribs. So there is a good support by ribs. Because of these two reasons, we don't find disc prolapse in the thoracic region. The disc prolapse is common in the cervical region because we flex, we extend, we rotate. The disc prolapse is common in the lumbar region because we bend, we extend, we turn. Because of these excessive movements and degenerative changes, there is a disc prolapse. So obviously the treatment will be restriction of movements by giving a lumbosacral belt and cervical collar asking him to lie on hard surfaces so that it is so that the spine does not move excessively we ask them to restrict movements we give painkillers anti-inflammatory substances and if it is if it, if there's a lot of inflammation and edema we give steroids if it is not going to subside with this medical form of treatment and then finally we go to the surgical form of treatment so disc prolapse is a treatable spinal cord disorder Post-traumatic compression by fractured vertebra. If there is a fractured vertebra, we try to get the help of the neurosurgeon and orthopedic surgeon and we try to fix it out. Vascular. The arteriovenous malformation. There's, if there is a direct communication from the artery to the veins, the arteriovascular malformations, it can go and compress the spinal cord or steal the blood. Either way, it is going to cause a, a deficit. So then we can intervene, get an interventional uh, expert on this and then treat it, intervene and then treat it. 
Then we have other vascular disorders like antiphospholipid antibody syndrome or hypercoagulable states. It antiphospholipid antibody syndrome it can affect both the arteries and the veins. And here we give anticoagulants, the vitamin K antagonists, and they do better. Again, this is a treatable cause. Inflammatory conditions, multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is an inflammatory condition affecting the myelin sheath. It is the disorder of the central nervous system. So it affects the optic nerve, it affects the brain, it affects the spinal cord. And therefore, since it's a demyelinated disease, only the large uh, the tracts which are well myelinated are affected. Posterior column, pyramidal tract, optic nerve and cerebellum. Spinothalamic is not that much affected because it is least myelinated. So it goes and affects the myelinated tracts and the myelination gets affected. So they can present with almost a sudden or, or subacute onset of focal neurological deficit. If a person presents with a sudden or a acute or a subacute onset of focal neurological deficit, always we have to suspect two conditions. One vascular, second is demyelination. Vascular because there is sudden cessation of blood flow. So the area which, which gets compromised will obviously get affected and second the demyelinative disease because the myelin sheet there is a good myelination and there is good saltatory conduction and impulse jump, jumping from one node internode of Ranvier to the other internode of Ranvier because there are sodium channels at the internode so it can jump fast and the conduction velocity is very good in a myelinated sheet but if it gets demyelinated the conduction velocity gets very much slowed down and they can present with acute or subacute onset of weakness. So multiple sclerosis is a demyelinated disease, affects the myelin sheath, it's an inflammatory disease, autoimmune nature, so we give steroids. So again it's a treatable condition. Neuromyelitis optica affects the spinal cord predominantly, more than three corticose structures of the spinal cord segment with the optic nerve environment. Here we treat it with rituximab. Then multiple sclerosis, we give steroids, methylpredine solen, followed by the immune modulating drugs but for neuromyelitis optica we give rituximab then transverse myelitis sle and vasculitis these connective tissue disorders we give steroids infective pathology the viral infections can affect the spinal cord and and uh, can present with paraparesis the common viral infections are herpes simplex virus varicella zoster virus hiv infections so here we can give antiviral agents we have bacterial infections affecting the spinal cord like syphilis where we can give penicillin. We have parasitic infections affecting the spinal cord like cysticercosis. So we can give albendazole, sometimes steroids, cystosomiosis. We can give again antiparasitic agents. Developmental disorders, syringomyelia. Syringomyelia is a developmental disorder. A cavity forms in the center of the spinal cord. The posterior column and pyramidal tracts do not cross at the level of the spinal cord. It crosses at the level of the medulla oblongata. The posterior column and pyramidal tract cross at the level of the medulla oblongata. But spinothalamic tract crosses one or two segments immediately and traverses through the spinal cord. So if there is a lesion in the center of the cord, it affects the traversing spinothalamic fibers but space the posterior column fibers. So very interesting condition the dissociated sensory loss. The sensations carried by spinothalamic tract are affected. That is the pain and temperature are affected. But the sensations carried by posterior column that is touch, position, joint, vibration, sense are spread. Very interesting. If we touch a person with syringomyelia, he will be able to feel the touch sensation. But if he keeps the hand in the fire, he will not be able to appreciate the pain. Very interesting. So these people realize that they do not have the perception of pain when they accidentally keep their hands in the fire. So if that is the kind of history which is forthcoming, the diagnosis is obvious, it is syringomyelia, we confirm it with MRI. Syringomyelia and then we have meningomyelocil and uh, tethered cord syndrome. Here the pores do not cross, do not close. Around 24, 25 plus or minus one or two days, the anterior pore closes and then posterior pore closes in the embryo but if the anterior pore does not close then the meninges and the brain comes out known as meningoencephalocele if the posterior pore does not close then the spinal cord comes out through the skin 
what we call it as the tethered cord syndrome. So these are all developmental abnormalities because of non-closure of anterior pore or posterior pore. So these developmental abnormalities, we can intervene surgically and definitely try to correct it. So again, these are treatable causes. Finally, metabolic, very much treatable, especially vitamin B12 deficiency. Vitamin B12 is responsible for myelination. And therefore, if there's a deficiency of vitamin B12, the posterior column, the pyramidal tract, the optic nerve gets affected, the peripheral nerves, the large fibers get affected, spinothalamic tract does not get affected. So if there's no focal or, or localized lesion, it's a generalized lesion wherein the posterior columns, pyramidal tracts, optic nerve and peripheral nerve gets affected. The large fibers get affected, the myelinated fibers affected. Here, all we need to do is just replace by vitamin B12. If the person starts taking a lot of vitamin B12, the, the disease gets cured. So it's a highly treatable condition. Uh, spinal cord disorders, which is highly treatable, is a vitamin B12 deficiency, giving rise to subacute combined degeneration. All we need to do is to give supplements of vitamin B12. And then, copper deficiency. This we commonly see in, in persons who use toothpaste, which contain a lot of zinc. Zinc antagonizes the levels of copper and therefore toothpaste or enamel which contain the zinc decreases the copper level and the decreased copper level can cause myelopathy. So again here we replace with copper and the person becomes better. So when a person presents with spinal cord disorders as a clinician our prime focus should be on treatable causes of spinal cord disorders. The non-treatable cause of spinal cord disorders it is good for academic discussion or, or giving a nosology. But what the patient is more interested is in the treatable forms of the disease so that he can get treated and get cured of. So when a clinician approaches a patient, you should always think about the treatable causes of disorder so that he can treat and make the patient better. After all, the role of the doctor is to treat, comfort and cajole the patient. So even in spinal cord disorders, though there are non-treatable causes, there are many treatable causes of spinal cord disorders and our focus and approach should be on the treatable cause of spinal cord disorders. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture. If you have any suggestions or comments kindly post onto my YouTube channel but please like and subscribe my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my every page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.